Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, you're good. Sorry, my Mac had a bit of a heart attack when I asked to share the screen. Maybe quit Zoom. Okay, and you should now be able to see my screen, correct? Yep. Cool, thank you, sorry about that. Okay, um, so I did a little title amendment uh, in this. Uh, I'm gonna be sharing a resource list at the end of the talk, which hopefully will be uh, quite useful. It's uh, one of the questions I've been asked uh, the most by people starting out in cybersecurity is where do I start? How do I, how do I begin? Or how do I take what I know so far and, and kind of turn in something? Uh, it might be people in industry um, who have been in IT support systems administration um, Chris and Carlotta did a great job just now of talking about kind of coming from different fields and and some of the ways to communicate in cybersecurity effectively with different groups. So uh, it's kind of been a great lead in for this. Um, start off with a little kind of background on me. I, I started breaking things when I was a, a few years old. Um, I was about 14 when I became a systems administrator uh, for a local startup and took that from two employees up to about 40 employees in the space of five, six years. And I've kind of just been dabbling since then. Uh, I had a weird urge in my early 20s to do a PhD and that almost sucked 10 years of my life out. Um, I ended up spending about a year on it while going and working elsewhere. And then uh, eventually kind of came back and finished that off several years later. Which led into a 10 year stint at BYU as a professor in cybersecurity. Um, where I created the cybersecurity program and several of the courses that are currently running there. And late last year, decided to move back into industry. Uh, I done some consulting uh, while at BYU and, and kind of thought it was the time to make the move back and uh, have been loving that since then. So I really enjoy uh, the opportunity to mentor new people uh, and uh, kind of new uh, talent in cybersecurity. Um, I found it very eye-opening to kind of watch them go through the process where they go from asking the questions that there are answers for to the questions that there are not answers for uh, and helping figure out how to, how to answer some of those tougher questions um, involving different aspects of security. So that's really kind of what led to the rename of the slide um, in the kind of shifting of the target audience from the pure noob uh, to what's something I think will be helpful for all levels. Um, we, you know, have the kind of first timers in cybersecurity who have, you know, they might, have been uh, in the Equifax breach or, or some other kind of information leak. They may have just heard about it from a friend. They might just be watching the news. Um, but there's a lot of people out there who are kind of hearing about this new cybersecurity thing and, and start to do a bit of research and like, hey, this can make a ton of money, sounds interesting, and they start to move in. We have the, the novice who has a lot of energy, uh, just doesn't really know sometimes what to do with it, but it will eventually figure out how to, how to get good. Um, the student who is great at self-learning, they're disciplined, they kind of can pick up books and understand them, but they don't have much experience. And then we have um, a lot of individuals who I've worked with professionally, uh, I would put into this kind of the experienced category of they, they've been in IT, DevOps, systems engineering uh, for many years, they have a lot of experience, uh, and they actually know a lot about security, often without knowing that they do. Uh, they're often quite not aware that the way they do things is, is a fundamental part of, of security and they've, they've got some good habits and sometimes some bad habits, but a lot of experience, which can be very valuable. Um, you have the wizard, which is the, the individual everyone goes to when they have a question. You know, they're normally known because they don't get much done themselves, but they answer everyone else's questions. And if uh, any organization of any significant size has several people like that there. And then you have the master, which is kind of what we aspire to be, this unachievable kind of uh, movie theatricized hacker who can who can break into anything who can investigate anything who can answer any question and 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 know and sees all knows all um and you know, does everything so i've broken this down uh, before i kind of go through the resource list into five key things how to get started how to stay uh, how to search how to organize and then why uh, a little discussion on relationships and, and how that works so one of the biggest challenges in getting started in cyber is, is the confusion about where to go. You know, you're interested in cybersecurity, where do, where do we go from here? And so people jump on and they start looking at jobs and opportunities and they see all these different job roles out there. Um, penetration tester, forensic analyst, red teamer, compliance officer, 
Um, and often it's kind of, well, how do we even get started in that? I'm going to step back from this a little bit and talk something about something that uh, Carlotta just mentioned, uh, which is about risk. Um, everything here is about risk. Um, and if you think, you know, when you got out of bed this morning, probably most of us are are stuck at home because of this COVID-19 stuff and, and trying to do the social distancing. So it may not be that everyone here has brushed their teeth yet, uh, but at some point today, uh, hopefully uh, we're, we're all going to do that. And why do we do that? Spend a few minutes brushing our teeth because we want to avoid tooth decay. We want to avoid smelling bad to people around us. Uh, this is risk management. Uh, the, the threat is tooth decay. The threat is people not wanting to be near us, not because of COVID-19, but because of our breath smells like uh, a sewage plant. And so we brush our teeth, we spend a few minutes doing this, and it takes some time out where we could be doing other potentially more productive or more fun or interesting things. But we stand in front of the mirror and we brush our teeth a few times each morning and each evening, sometimes more. This is a, this is a basic step to, to mitigating the risk of tooth decay, mitigating the risk of um, um, bad breath. And we, we do this every day without really thinking about it because it's become habitual. And so a lot of security is about realizing the, the good habits and the bad habits and becoming aware of those and then looking at the technical connections that we're passionate about or we're interested in in those. Um, if you think about your life when you go out, when you get in the car, you know, driver's insurance, it's, it's risk, you're offsetting the risk of having a wreck or someone hitting you to, to another company that's going to pay for that and pay for any expenses and medical costs that, that will involve. So all these things are, are related to that. Thank you. Um, so we, we naturally, as human beings, you know, the fight or flight reflex, we have a tendency or kind of natural uh, ability to identify risks without even being aware that they are actually called risks and deal with those in our daily lives. And everything in security is about relating or quantifying those risks to different aspects of maybe our personal lives or a business that we're involved in or a startup or charity work, whatever we're doing, it, it, it relates to that. So step one, I think, is, is realize that everything we do does pertain to security in some way. And then that makes it very easy to think about, okay, what are you passionate about in your life? What are the things that really excite you or drive you to, to discover, to learn, to become better at something? And how do we evolve those? And so finding our passion um, or, or kind of what interests us and how that relates to security tends to become th something that we do more naturally and the career that we want uh, will align with that. And, and the exciting thing about this is this, just on the latest stats, there was a report last year, um, it's in the slide notes, which I'll push out afterwards. There's over 4 million unfilled cybersecurity positions right now today or three months ago, probably more now. There's next to zero unemployment. And if you have an interest in cybersecurity and willing to put in the time to learn and develop that into a skill set that's saleable, the jobs will come. Um, it is almost unheard of to be unemployed in cybersecurity. It, it, it really is. Once you find what you're passionate about and people who are interviewing you will see that, the jobs will just flow. And if you're not a security professional, but you, this is just kind of a sideline interest, whatever you learn in this actually adds a lot of value to your, your other technical careers. Um, systems administrators, uh, software engineers, et cetera, all benefit from having this managers, directors, um, CEOs. They benefit from this, this skill set um, as, a, as a kind of complementary uh, skill. Okay, so what are the biggest obstacles to getting into cybersecurity? And I, I seem to have left an arrow there as a spoiler. But so the biggest obstacles I see, and, and I've seen this unfortunately far too many times, is people say, okay, this is, this is good. I'm interested in cybersecurity. I, I learn something, I practice, I fail. I learn something, I practice, I fail. Uh, if I follow a guide that says step by step, okay, do this, click here, do this, do this, do this, et cetera, it works. But otherwise, it's a lot of failures and a lot of frustration and some people get really, you know, bothered about this and they, they walk away and find a different career. The, uh, the, the trick of this and what the chart should look like is something more like this. We learn, we practice, we fail. If we fail, we normally go back and we look at the scope and have a look and say, okay, well, what are we trying to learn? Is that too much where I'm at? Do I need to take smaller steps? Do I need to go find a mentor? And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But how, how can we make that scope something 
Um, and it, I didn't put a diagram into this, but if you kind of think of yourself standing in the middle of a circle, which is your comfort zone, the idea of any kind of learning or any kind of skill development is we're pushing that comfort zone a little bit by each thing we learn. Sometimes we get a little too ambitious and we're like, I want to learn all the things and we rush out there and we're like, okay, so take a step back, let's think, what are, where are we at and where do we want to go? Once we, once we figure that out, it becomes a lot more uh, natural that we'll start going on this kind of learn, practice, fail, succeed path. Um, we'll have our failures, we'll adjust the scope a little bit and we'll get somewhere and have a success. The big thing here is really take some sense of accomplishment in those successes. Um, we do learn from our failures and that's fine, but the successes are important to, to teach us, and this isn't just cybersecurity, this is kind of general life philosophy, this, those successes help us realize that we, we can move past failure. And over with time and, and experience, the failures become less and the successes become more. Um, and the, the confidence that kind of grows with that makes us uh, really able to, to, to take on some challenging things and, and show some real value. Now, we don't, at least I have never gotten to a point where it's all successes and no failures. I still fail far more than I succeed, but I know that if I persist long enough, I can succeed. And that's what I mean by confidence. It's yes, I can, I can go at this and it's gonna, I'm gonna fail a lot of times, um, but eventually I, I will find a way to, to get to where, I'm, where I want to be or, or accomplish what needs doing. And, and when I say confidence, it's not that the confidence that you'll get it right first time every time. If that happens to you, great, please contact me and tell me how you did it because I would like to, to steal that from you. But really it's about how do we measure uh, those, those small successes and how do we progress from that failure to success? And do we have the confidence that if we give ourselves enough time and persistence that we will get there? Uh, and that I found in, in people starting out as cybersecurity is one of the hardest things to really get to get down. So hang in there, uh, you got this. Okay, third thing, um, become a Google master. So many things are findable and discoverable in cybersecurity by what I would call search refinement. Okay, you go out and you search, how do I become a penetration tester? Well, that's great, you'll get some good articles, giving you some good resources and start. Um, but as, um, as time goes on um, and you start to look for things very specifically, uh, let me try and think of a, an example of this. I did have a couple when I was making this slide. Let's say you are performing a security assessment of a uh, network file server and you scan the server and you see that it's serving up um, Windows file shares, SMB file shares. So you go and search for exploits Windows file shares and you come up with a massive number of, of um, vulnerabilities and exploits and CV reports and everything. And that just becomes an overwhelming amount of information. So how do you then tune that down and find what is actually going to be successful? We start to put in, okay, what else is in there? Um, maybe I'm actually looking for a published vulnerability on this. So let's, let's put in CV as a keyword. Um, let's put in a couple of logical operators and connect those with things that are MMAP scan or, or whatever we, would, we did before to discover that service is there as well. And we, we refine and narrow the search down. Um, there's a few examples of this in the, in the resource list I'll give out um, at the end, but uh, this 99% of, of what we will be looking for will be out there somewhere. It's just having the persistence and the uh, kind of practice with Google um, to actually drill down and find what we're after. And if it's not, that's what we create and get ourselves known for in the community. Okay, if, there's, if, there's, if you get right to the point and no one has actually done this in a way that works for your system and your platform in this particular way, there's your research project. Go share what you did. Come to B-Size next year and tell us about it. This one, I, I was going to start off with four things. I added it to five because this, this, is, this is the bane of my existence. I am, organization for me is one of the biggest challenges of my professional and personal life. Um, physical, digital, whatever, whatever works. Uh, the fewer of these you have, the better. When I say here that I have used, um, all apart from two of these I currently use. So this is, this is something that I, I, I talk the talk, but I definitely don't walk the walk yet. Um, I tend to grab whatever is nearest to me at the time. Um, I have spent, uh, I've used Macs and Windows systems in the past. I spent the last half, you know, five, six years pretty much exclusively on Windows systems. I'm now at a company where we're a Mac shop, so I'm back onto Mac. Uh, my home PC is Windows, so now I'm like, you know, I'm used to shortcuts to run up, pull up Notepad and 
and, and other systems that I use on my home system and now I'm having to find the equivalents on Mac, which is a challenge. So my notes right now are just all over the place, but find a way to organize the information you, you find because there is a fire hose of security latest information out there uh, and, and come up with a structured way of organizing that. You will, if you get into that habit early, it will make your life so much easier. And lastly, but definitely not least is, is a mentor. Um, because this is such a small community and because the knowledge is so fresh and so new and coming out so quickly, um, effective mentors and, and peer mentoring are, are, are critical parts of, of being successful. Um, you don't have to find someone who has the skills you want necessarily, but someone who has the same goals or ideals um, or, or learning methods that you find useful. Um, someone you can relate to in terms of, of what those are. If you can't find a mentor, then learn what you can and become a mentor. Uh, and, and, and develop a peer mentoring relationship where you learn together and, and share what you've learned. Um, small study groups are great for this. Uh, Slack is free. Go, go make a little Slack server and, and invite your colleagues, coworkers, friends, whoever else is interested and just form a little stealth study group. You each do your own thing and you, you kind of share your findings or what you're doing on there. It can be very motivational to, to actually want to spend the time doing this, especially when you start coming into those failure scenarios where you need you know, a good friend or a good mentor to give you a kick up the backside and and you know, help you reaffirm yourself. So I, I said I'd get to the Q&A and, and resource list and I won't spend kind of the majority of the time doing this because I, I think it'd be a lot more interesting to share this and, and have some feedback on it. So I will drop this link into chat right now. Um, let me just grab this. This is gonna come out in right here. Okay, um, so you now have access to this list. Yeah, I see people joining, great. So this I put together a few years ago. Um, I started this actually several years ago, um, mainly for freshman students when they come in and say, okay, I want to learn about cybersecurity. And at the time, uh, the program I was in, the IT program at BYU, we didn't really do much in security until the, the junior year. And that was way too late for people who came in wanting to learn it. And so this was a, a kind of resource I put together. I've since used it at uh, summer camps for um, youth. I've used it um, for experienced professionals who are looking to find new resources or, or something to, to expand their knowledge into. Um, if uh, you're using Google Docs, you, you definitely want to blow up this kind of index side at the left here. There should be a little button here which will help you navigate through. This is by no means complete. So there's a lot of information that is, not, that is out there that is not listed here. Um, I'd very much appreciate feedback. Um, anything you'd like to share on there, I think. Yeah, I will, it is shared off my other account, so I'll have to do that later. Uh, I tried to log in here and I, I couldn't find my, my 2FA key, but I will share this, this out for comments, um, update the sharing so it has uh, comments from anonymous users later and, and people can give feedback on it or other suggestions. So let me pull up the, uh, the Q&A. Okay, what do we have? Current trends show attackers are breaching networks and stay in undetected sometimes for months. What areas of cybersecurity are best for learning how to detect intrusion? Are there certs, careers, or parts of study that specialize in the ESCS? Yes, absolutely there are. Um, so uh, this is this is a one of these areas that a lot like a lot of security takes multiple skill sets, right? Um, network engineering, um, systems administration. Uh, the, the big thing here is visibility, right? Getting visibility to your network and these platforms like Splunk. Um, Elasticsearch, uh, Logstash, uh, Kibana, um, Sumo Data. Um, there's, there's a lot of companies now out there now that are doing these basically log aggregation platforms. And what they do is they bring in um, lo uh, computer logs from you know login events, from using wireless networks. Um, yes, I'll post these in the chat. Um, they bring all these events from all these different types of systems across the network, and they ingest those and allow you to see those centrally, um, and then perform correlations and, and events through there. So that gives you the visibility to be able to see if, if people are in your network after that. It's, it's investigative skills, forensics, instant response, reverse engineering, which is this, this top setup here, um, are very useful uh, kind of platforms and tools to start looking at some of those things. Um, but I will I'll post some resources in the chat. Uh, I will do that after the, oh, if there's no other questions, actually I'll do that right now. How do you go about finding, asking someone to be a mentor? Um, Twitter was mentioned as a great way of connecting. So this doesn't have to be someone you actually know personally. This can be someone you kind of reach out and ask some questions to or just start connecting with. Um, LinkedIn, 
uh, is a great place to, to find people, um, you know, grow your network there. Um, local groups, organizations, OWASP chapters, um, the uh, uh, B-sides, um, DEF CON, um, a lot of these groups have local local chapters um, that will have kind of periodic events or monthly get togethers and, and you know, people just meet and, and give workshops or kind of share things with each other. Um, I will update. Hang on, let me uh, just make sure I grab these questions because these may disappear after the after the session ends. In fact, what I'll do is I'll do better. I'll actually answer these in the document, uh, the Google Doc that is being shared. So they'll be there after this ends for, for you as well. Uh, once you found someone, uh, a lot of you know, most cybersecurity people, we're all incredibly busy. Uh, so you, you don't be afraid of persistence. Uh, most of us will tell you if you're being overly assertive or, or kind of a little uh, too, uh, um, too pushy. But uh, a little bit of pushiness never hurts in this. And I, I've frequently told people, hey, if I don't get back to you quickly, you know, I, I'm not going to be annoyed if you start kind of poking me. And if I, if you're doing it too much, obviously I'll say something and be like, hey, just give me some, give me a minute. I'm in the middle of something here, but. Ask someone, you know, hey, I'm getting started in this. Have you got anything you'd advise, any recommendations? I'm looking for a mentor or, or someone to kind of help me help me get through this or help me understand this. Um, and most, most of us are pretty willing to do that uh, if we have capacity to do that. Okay, uh, next question. If you have a passion for information security and experience in IT, but you are not interested in programming and scripting, even though you have that knowledge and how it works, what paths and roles in security do you recommend for this situation? Um, any, we need so many people, it really doesn't matter that much. I mean, obviously not, probably not uh, software, you know, security engineer or, or software, security software engineer, uh, if you're not interested in, in a day job of programming and scripting. Um, a lot of the other roles would, would work just fine. Um, I, I'm kind of in that boat. I have spent a lot of time programming in the past. I can program in a lot of different languages, but it's not what I want to spend my life doing. That being said, I, I enjoy doing, you know, kind of going in deep a few days here and there and, and building out some, some systems or helping, helping solve some interesting problems. Um, if you really just want to stay completely away, that, away from that, uh, forensics, instant response um, would be great uh, areas to look at. Um, right at the top here, there is actually a link, this CyberSeq, this Cyber Pathway. Um, let me show you this one. This, this is actually a really good answer to, I think, so this actually, uh, and again, this is not exhaustive, but this is one organization's kind of take on the different careers that are out there. And uh, you can go down and kind of say what your background is. Okay, so not software engineering, but say you want to do, you know, networking or security, uh, systems engineering, you can go through and it kind of highlights which ones would work for that. Um, but I would say almost all the roles, apart from the ones that specifically are software engineering uh, developer roles would, would work well with that. Does that answer your question? Okay, great. Um, we have another three minutes probably before we need to get started ready for the next speaker. So if there's any other questions, what well, would be a good security position for someone who can spot patterns? Um, the, I mean, there's a lot in big data. Uh, the uh, security analyst positions, um, people who are going through looking at the logs, aggregating that information, figuring out what information is relevant, correlating that together. Um, that would definitely be uh, there. Um, Intrusion detection systems, um, working on IDS platforms, um, Bro, Suricutter, uh, or now Zeek, I guess, is, is the platform, um, is a great uh, tool for monitoring network traffic and, and kind of spotting things that are going on and trying to find patterns. But there's a, you know, big data slash security roles. Um, not necessarily, so the question was, what would scripting be recommended for this? Um, I mean, scripting would definitely be useful. Um, query languages would be a lot better. So both uh, tools such as Splunk and Elasticsearch, they have their own query languages where you can write um, correlations or queries across data. Uh, machine learning platforms, um, R Studio, um, that kind of that kind of platform would be useful. So I'd say more queries than scripting, but don't definitely don't dismiss scripting. It would it would be helpful. 
Uh, I'm going to take that question and, and put some more information in the document about that after after the session. Any other questions? Great, well, thank you. Um, got a few minutes for the next speaker. Um, I will make some updates to the document and answer some of these questions with some of the other links and resources there. And um, I'll add the permissions to comment and, and check back on that now and again to see if there's any things to add to it. I'm sure there will be.